it's called the Steam Trooper. You know what And by that man putting his hand on his gun and not breaking his hand, so it's kind of a That gave me a little while. Oh, yeah? Okay. So, that's something that's well with him. He was like, what was it like? I don't know. I'm going to go to the first one. I'll meet you. Okay. Library. Was there? Um, well, I, I know myself. 
problem was that to just had problem 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 problem
and for the most part, it doesn't have a good talk. Is a strongly typed uh, language. Every also, type because has Go is a strongly typed language, and every type has to be checked beforehand. If you do you not, not check the type, extract, and you trace in your direction, or use the wrong type, uh -huh. it will um, extract a stack trace in your direction. Most of the reflect uh -huh. control. Oh, um, I. Feel free to ask questions throughout if you have any. Oh, well, I got the intro. Uh, feel free to ask questions most throughout if you have any. Uh, uh, most of the meat of the reflect module is a meat type and value. I'm just going to refer to them as objects. Well, the type interface and the value structure, type I'm just going to refer to them as objects for simplicity. Metadata. Uh, the type uh, objects contain um, like the metadata of a value, type value. Uh, like the value of the number of objects it takes, and the actual type of the value. The value, it's the value it's object true. is a handle. It's not the value itself. It's a handle type. into it. Generally speaking, yeah. the way you will get a type the object type, is by calling it the way you will get a type or object is either by asking a value for its type of it, value or type method. Uh, asking a value for its type of the yeah, value yeah, type, type method. Uh, and that's the type interface. The type interface, type interface has a lot of methods in it, and I don't have listed here because has a lot of it may be useful for some purposes to find out what byte a value aligns to. to that's generally not useful for these kind of usages. A value uh, to. That's generally generally not speaking, the a lot of them are self-explanatory names generally for one, but a lot there's of them a few are that are necessary to be aware of. But uh, there's a few that are necessary to be aware of. It gives you uh, the, roughly speaking, the category of what kind of type it is. It gives you so, for example, if you pass a list of an array of bytes, kind will give you an array kind. And the kind will give you an array kind. Or el element the functions as more or less the reverse uh, of that. If you pass an array of bytes, the type it will return is a byte type. If you pass an array of bytes, uh, the type it will there's return is also a uh, key is similar, uh, except it only applies to maps. Uh, uh, it gives you the type of the key for the map. It gives you the type of function does have uh, other things. It only works um, on arrays, um, channels, maps, pointers, and, pointers, and slices. It only works on arrays, and channels, maps, pointers, it, and while slices. While it's generally useful for those, and there's one thing that is it, absolutely necessary for it, and it's dealing with pointers. There's one thing that usually, is when for, just writing pointers. normal code in Go, usually it will just do the right thing for dereferencing. And go, that's not true when you're using reflection. Do the right thing for dereferencing. For and dealing with pointers an element, say you get a pointer to a struct. Or dealing with pointers uh, element, if you try to, to struct, just do stuff with the type, uh, you will fail and it will form the stack trace in your face. Elm will get you, you will fail the structure the itself, or rather the type of the structure itself. Elm will get you the uh, structure And so anytime you see code that has pointers in it and is doing reflection, uh, you'll see so elements called repeatedly. Has pointers in it and is doing function, also, certain call of the methods only apply to certain types certain of uh, type. Of the methods uh, only the apply to certain types various field of types type. only apply to structs, uh, and the it will panic if you use it with something that's not a struct. Only apply to structs, uh, and it will panic if you use it actually a, a struct. Uh, a somewhat unusual thing with the field by index. That is not the index of the field. If you want to get the end field of the structure, you call it the field method, not the field by index. Field by index is recursive. It takes a list of indexes. I'm not sure what that's used for, but I'm sure it's used for something. 
I'm not sure what that's for, but I'm sure it's Feel by name or name Frog. Methods will, as is usual, go to style, will return both the value and an OK Boolean, so you can see if it actually succeeded or not. And of course, the num field is total count. Uh, functions have something similar with the method, or methods have something similar with the method, method by name, or method, num method. Those apply to all types, they aren't limited just to structures, because you can add types to any or add methods to any type. Uh, also, receive, send, those are channel only, and panic otherwise. Uh, reflect value of, that's how you will usually get your first value in a chain. How you will usually uh, get your first value and then we have a similar whoops and then we have a similar thing with the value similar structure uh, we have a similar thing generally speaking value. you'll get your first value with reflect uh, value of instead of reflect type generally speaking you'll get your first and, value with reflect uh, value of instead of reflect type of the and value object uh, does have a lot of the same functions. It does have the com and lm methods, same as about the type. However, lm only works with interface or pointer values. However, lm only works with interface or pointer values. Generally not used as much. The reflect indirect, on the other hand, is not used as much. It the performs like more or less the same function as the common use of it LM for types. Generally speaking, we use in reflect indirect when dealing with value. Because if you get a pointer to a structure, you'll have when you get the value, you will be getting the value of the pointer, not the value of the structure. And so if you then try to get the fields, it will panic and stack trace. And so if you then try to get the field, so it will manage. you first have to get the value of the structure itself and then so on and on first have to get the value um, of the structure on itself this and, and on and on left fields. out the various getters and setters. Uh, on um, those are all pretty simple left out and obvious and how they work. Setters. Except of course um, you have to guard them because they will panic if you don't do it. Except of course and that goes as a general rule. They will panic. Don't do it. Um, and that goes as a general rule. There's a couple, well, actually, there's the interface there's method of values well, is actually, the, the one gator that you can always use because it just gives you the interface version of the value. The one um, that you can always use there's no equivalent the for the sensor that value. I'm immediately aware um, of. There's no equivalent for sensor that um, I'm immediately aware of. The can interface value or, or method for the value object can is about whether a type implements an interface. It's not getting the data about whether a type as with the type of getting field getting uh, methods and then you have getting call and call slice uh, methods, and then methods which those only work on functional call, values call and. Obviously, methods will panic if you only work try to use an else wise. And obviously, um, will panic if you the try to use an else wise. Okay. Um, yeah, the the here. Yeah, here. Um, here. <coughs> Generally um, speaking, there are are only certain conditions in which you can set a value once you've accessed it. Certain in which you can set well, once you have a that value, value of the thing you actually want to mess with. Um, well, this this example code omits any of the checks you would normally do, uh, and it assumes the target is a pointer to a structure, because that's most of the time you're doing introspection, and that's what you're going to be using. Most um, of the time to do first thing that going for field is you have to get the value um, of the target, which is going to be a pointer value, going for field is and then the value dereference that which is going to be a pointer value, then get and the then field value, which is also going to be a pointer to the field, the field um, 
but I will show it here also if you don't find any, but you can use any of them, and if you're scanning it, you're probably going to be using the regular field uh, method, because you can just iterate through it, and then, of course, interact through the field value. Then to get the, once you finally have the field value, you can get the data with interface, or if you know the type, you can get with one of the special ones. Interface or and you know the type under certain conditions, you can set a value. And the under certain conditions, you can that set comes a down value. to the can ad address and can set methods. That comes down to the before can something can be set, it has to be addressable. I guess I don't know the exact boundaries of this because I, I run tests that didn't know seem to work they should have. Of this, but I for the most part, if you're dealing with a point of structure, it will work. But um, for the most part, if you're in order to be setable, it, it has work. to be addressable. Um, and then in order to be sometimes settable, if it is settable, you cannot set private methods as I remember. And it will panic if you try to set something that's not settable. Yeah, but if it is set, you can set it with set in this case but set integer set or you can other method. Set it with set, um, in this case set integer. As the code shows, if you're method. trying to introspect a structure for methods, it's as a lot the code shows, simpler. You just get the value of the pointer, and simpler. then you can directly get, get the methods from that. Um, this is assuming that methods are defined using pointers as their reference to the class or reference to the structure that they operate on. Um, and then once you have a method value, there's a couple different ways of dealing with it. Um, you can use the call uh, method or the call slice, which they don't always. Or Does they have to do with whether a function takes a variable number of arguments or not? The list you send to that or get back from it is not a list of the actual arguments itself. It's a list of their values, the value objects, and whether a method has a variable number of arguments or not. And whether it is it's present method has a variable number of arguments is a veridic method in is type. Present in the is a veridic uh, method in type. The other way of dealing with a method is to get its interface. Is the other way calling of the interface method, method on the to get its method value, and that will get you a the actual method and reference itself as if you were assigning it normally to a variable. However, since methods don't just come predefined with a specific method type, you have to use interface, you can't use built-in function, and then you need to cast it to whatever function prototype you have. Commandant does use this, you can build a table of them beforehand, and Table of them um, if you're doing and anything with methods, you will need um, to check them. Doing the checks are a bit more complicated methods, than with fields because the a method has multiple, multiple things you have to, you have to check. Because the num in, num out, in, out methods the on a type, num in, those are for checking the arguments and results of a type. type. Method. Those are for checking um, the arguments and results of a. Obviously, method. the num in and num out have the number of the arguments in and results in out. The and then in and out each take a number index, of arguments and in that and will out. return the and value, and or not the value itself, but the value type will return the value of the, or not the value itself, but input the value or output. And then from there, you can check the things. With a method, input since Go doesn't really have classes, it just has structures, with a functions, and so it's really a syntactic sugar to make it look kind of like classes. There's a hidden method, or a hidden input in there, which is the type it's operating on. Um, generally speaking, the type it's operating on. 
any code that Generally uses the uh, check that uses this kind of check, it's probably not a bad idea to build check checker functions that check. do all of the checking for a method on their own. Do all the checking for a method on their own. And Yes. Yes. The pseudo class thing that it has. Yes. Um, yes. The that pseudo it, class. Thing when you get the count of uh, arguments, it'll yeah, show up it, as uh, one higher than you were necessarily the expecting. Of arguments, um, it'll show up as and, one higher than you were necessarily oh, expecting. Yeah, question. Um, and oh, you have a question. Um, which methods do you mean? You mean these? Um, which methods do you mean? You mean these? Yeah, these methods. So just to contrast it, the C++ reflection is now the majority of the methods that will be available at compile time and run time. So you can do compile time text uh, analysis. Uh, it doesn't check for stuff at uh, compile time. It doesn't uh, check so for stuff at compile time. No, it's Go would normally do these checks at compile time, which is why you have to guard every single use. Uh, yeah, so get her to try to run use, uh, the uh, end get her method on a value and it's a boolean value, uh, it'll panic. Normally that check would happen at compile time. And it's a boolean value, it'll panic. There was something like that. Uh, oh, and that's also the thing with needing to run indirect on both the structure, uh, oh, and the that's also the thing with needing to run indirect on the old structure value objects, is structure, those dereferences would normally have value objects automatically is just when you use a structure because there's no special syntax for that. You have to do that manually. Structure, because there's no special syntax for that. You have to do that manually. While so this code is what? significantly simplified because it's not including this checks. It's significantly still because it's not checks. roughly what you have to have. Um, still you would have check roughly what you have to if have. you wanted to be completely um, safe about it. You, you would have, have a check, check probably before if you wanted to either before value up or check. right after it to probably double check that it is exactly what you think it is. Probably after, after indirect, double check and after the field exactly by name, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. Probably after indirect and after the field by name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the uh, no, 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 no. And the didn't make this talk quite as long as I thought I did. <laughs> I clearly didn't make this talk quite as long as I thought I did. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing that turns out to be a mixed bag with the one transfer from Python to Go is it's harder, with the obviously, but is in Python, you generally want to do introspection. You don't know until you actually run the code if something is going to work or not. 
don't it could know crash randomly without code, knowing about it because taking this case of uh, man, a function of being the do foo might get activated, man, except that it takes more arguments than it is supposed to, and then the program crashes. In this, you can check the arguments beforehand, you can check the returns ahead of time, and you simply won't pick up that function. Ahead of time, um, and, and so we won't pick up that function. Um, and the, uh, here. Oh, you have a question. Um, oh, you have a question. Um, it's on GitLab. It's GitLab in the uh, uh, slash commandant. It's, I haven't actually poked at it in quite a while because I got it to where it needed to be. I haven't actually poked at it in other projects. I'll probably be taking another pass at it soon because in preparing the talk I learned quite a bit more about the reflection system. But in the end, what happened with commandant is the way command uh, works is it does it all on the fly. When it gets an input from the prompt, it, it immediately goes, looks for a function with the right name, and then runs that function. It function. It immediately goes, with common with right name, because it's a compiled it language, it with doesn't have to handle the possibility that a function might be added later on. It have to and it also, at, at the time I didn't know this, I thought that the only effective way of getting the methods out of the structure was to iterate through them. Now, later I learned that you can do it by name. Um, so what Commandant does is when you first initialize it, so you, what Commandant does is um, when you actually I'm first getting way ahead of myself here. You, um, where uh, command actually, works by subclassing, here. Commandant uh, works by there's a Commandant class, 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 and then commandant there's a interface for a Commandant helper class. class. And, then and what you do is you write a Commandant helper. It just has one class. required function, which is, what you do is you write uh, a something a which lets Commandant give it the address to be able to talk to each other. And that uh, which structure has all of your handler, handler methods, and where the Python version, the subclass would have all your handler, handler methods. methods. Where the Python version, and then the subclass when you initialize Commandant, methods. you feed it the helper class, and, then, and it analyzes it, it finds all the appropriate methods, and imports them into its own map, and then it looks it up from there when you, when it gets input, and then it looks it up from there. Uh, when but that, I thought at the time that was the only way it could work. It turns out that, that you can't do it the way Python does it. I thought at the time that was the only way it could work. Way. It turns out that you can't do it the way Python does it. It would work either way. Also, also, I mentioned the receive send methods also, on values. Also There's also the try receive, try send. Methods on values. It, There's also uh, try receive, all of those try have send. to do with channels. And it, there's similar uh, one in the all those have to do with channels. And there's type similar one which chan di chan oops. direction. Okay. Uh, which with those you can access chan channels as you would otherwise, uh, but you can with those be you can somewhat more explicit about what whether you're just you getting the channel and wanting to block on it or not, which is just what the try send and try receive are, are block because those do not the block, try, whereas the try receive, receive and send do block. Do not block, whereas there's the bear sends do block. Obviously, more methods here than I'm showing there's because stuff that's not directly. Obviously, questioned. more methods here than I'm showing because stuff that's not directly. Questions? Yes. Okay, you, you said so try receive Correct. does not block, yes. but in and receive and send do. Correct. Uh, I only had, I, I, I saw that, like, 
what's, um, this might be going, I mean, I'm not sure if we've got uh, time. I, I'm wondering about uh, a meal chance. Uh, what kind of, what would try to receive kind of do with that? I'm, I'm just kind of, I haven't looked closely at try receive. Um, I haven't looked closely at try receive. What was it? I think they take the values themselves. What was it? I think they or is it values? I can actually look that up right now because I already have the information here. Um, a lot of the functions having to do with collection, they don't take values directly. They, or they don't take the data directly, they take value objects instead. Um, I do not remember if these do either. And actually, I'm welcome for a question. Actually, a little too I'm short for a question. Uh, of course, it's now it's becoming short. So we'll find. Uh, of course, now it's becoming also fine. Okay. Yes, the send and receive and try send, try receive. Those do okay, take yes, value objects. So there's that level of indirection there. Those do take value objects. So there's that level of indirection there. And uh, the is nil and is valid. Those uh, are also things you generally have to check, not just the other stuff. Is valid. Those are also um, things you generally have to check, not just the other stuff. And the call. Uh, I just change this. The call and slice the call method on functions the or on methods that on functions or on methods that oops. Okay, something's stuck here. Okay, something's stuck here. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Seriously stuck. Technical difficulties. Seriously, so. Okay, back to what I was actually trying to say. Um, okay, back to what I was actually trying to say. Um, what are we talking about? The, uh, oh, the call slice method, it's uh, oh, the giving a... Call slice method, it's giving a... The Call just takes a list of values to call the a function. Call, call slice just takes a list, takes a list of, of values as values well. To call the function. Call Once it gets past the uh, non-variable arguments, Once it then uses the rest as a uh, slice on the last arguments. argument. It then so. uses the rest as a slice on the last argument. So. Uh, and if anyone has any further questions, because I'm running out of things. And if anyone has any further questions, because I'm running out of things. No. There are no special options. In fact, uh, no. at least some no of the Go options. standard library uses this. Uh, I mentioned JSON earlier. Of the Go standard standard library uses uh, this. Uh, any field can have a string just attached uh, to it. And the string itself doesn't have any special string, meaning, but the JSON module, and it uses those to have any special meaning, meaning, but the JSON string module, there, and it encounters it a JSON field so with that string, string as its field there, name. It it'll put that in whatever field, field is associated with that tag. It'll put that in whatever field is associated with that tag. So, does that mean that even if you don't use Rust, you carry the overhead of supporting the collection? Yes. So, it's not like C where you. No, it's. They call it RTTI. No, it's. In fact, there's hardly any options for the Go compiler. It's. Uh, it's, there's hardly you know, it's made by Google, you think it's made by Apple, with the number of buttons it has. Uh, it's, 
even though it's made by Google, you would think it was made by Apple with the number of buttons it has. <laughs> Question. Question. Um, field by name, you just pass it a string and it looks for field with that name. Field by name function, you pass a function which is then repeatedly sent the, uh, the names of various fields. Um, that, there is some special handling for goes not actually subclassing, yeah, where you have one structure embedded directly into another. Not actually subclassing, um, where you have one structure embedded directly into another. Since Go doesn't have a proper uh, inheritance system, yeah. it uh, has Go something which looks kind of like it, if you squint too hard, where you just put the kind of like field or the field, 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 some other structure name directly in it without the associated field name. And then what the field by name func will do is it'll get all of the fields or rather it will iterate and be sequentially handed each of the field names, including the ones of the contained structures. So it's, it's not quite recursive because it's still a flat namespace, but it so is it's, it's not quite recursive seeing a lot more than just place, what you have obviously defined. And you can access uh, private fields with private functions, not just public ones. Just not, just public ones. ones. So uh, not so much with methods. With methods are not public, public only. So not so much with methods. Methods are public only. For fields, you can get private ones you, with For reflection. Fields, the methods, it has to be public methods. If, it not, if, if you actually methods, call the method, method on a type not, and, if, if you and you have call a certain number of private and public methods, and it will only count the private methods. It will only count the private the public ones. Um, well, field, I don't know what was going on of why they did it, well, but fields field, are only in structures, and methods can be it, on any type of fields. Are only so I, I don't know if there's something going on inside the language of that or not. So I, I don't know if there's something going on inside the language of that or not. Uh, anyone, any other questions? Uh, anyone, any other questions? So how, how um, close does this bring go to say a true functional language? Um, okay. I'm if you were familiar with Haskell. I'm not really familiar I'm with Haskell or any of the usual I'm functional languages really about really the close that got or is any of the usual when you do unit you know, testing you start getting that pushed that towards functional type usage you even in non functional languages. So I can't I don't have knowledge to properly answer that. So I can't I don't have knowledge to properly answer that. So I can't I don't have knowledge to properly answer that. It seems to be that given the way that um, it seems to be the way that the way Go that likes to work uh, of spawning Go routines for stuff. The way that Go it likes to work of does, spawning Go routines. I wouldn't necessarily for say stuff. that it pushes in that direction, it but it leans in that direction does, definitely. I wouldn't and also having multiple turn values makes it much easier to not have side effects. And also having multiple turn values makes it much easier to not have side effects. The Go time at them. Uh, podcast as a functional uh, podcast, yeah. just, just a little bit. Uh, that so answers the question. Then. <laughs> uh, that answers the question. Then. Uh, that answers the question. Then. Um, <laughs> sir, any other questions? Uh, um, sir, any other questions? So you you uh, oh, yes. started working on helping uh, to fill a hole um, in repo searching, is that right? Uh, sure. Yes. Are other 
I haven't gotten any third party um, merch requests any, uh, at all. Requests? A few months ago, I, I got someone who was poking at it. A few months ago, I and got someone who was poking at it. Someone may have mentioned it on Go Nuts at one point once I had it in place. But I haven't had a whole lot of direct interest, which may be the secret reason for doing this talk. Direct interest. Which Actually, it was the speaker dinner. Actually, it was the speaker. But uh, I, so far, it's worked but, in repo search uh, and without I, any problems. So far, once it got past the initial teaming trouble, and I have any problems, a fairly thorough test 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 system for it. So it, and I have it seems to be stable. Fairly thorough test system for it was a lot so faster than I expected it to it be. be of course, common with that, or command was itself was well designed in the first place, so of course, we had a good place to start from. Or command itself was well designed in the first place, so we had a good place to start from. Any other questions? Uh, I don't think I can come up with anything else to wing here. I don't um, think I can come up with anything else to wing here. So, um, oh, question. So, oh, question. General question. With the comp of two go, who would you rather lay your career compared to other languages you work in? What do you mean you would like in go language you um, are? Well, I can't answer that, but there is actually an incorrect assumption there. I'm still very well, new in my career beyond just hobbyist there. tinkering. I'm still very um, new in my career. I was somewhat familiar with C and um, fluent in Python I was before coming to Go and just C tiny smatterings of other languages. Go is very tiny smatterings of other languages. The first month or so, it Go seemed very, very weird. Because it, it does certain so things that you do not expect very, very if you're familiar with other languages. But once I got past some of the initial things and also stopped trying to fake a inheritance system in it, which it is not designed to do, and also got past certain things with the tooling itself, has a very opinionated way of how it does things, I found that it was. Yeah, a very uh, how it I found that it I found is <laughs> actually yeah. a very good fit uh, for my brain. I found that it it's is it once I got past the initial hurdle, brain, it flows. Al I'm yeah, almost as fluent in Go as I am in Python, despite having been familiar with Python I'm for probably a decade of tinkering, Python, and it just came to Go a couple Python years ago. And as I understand, the whole concept behind Go was to be easy for C programmers to change over to it. And the opinionated tooling is actually getting better, too. The developers in the recent versions have introduced the module system, which breaks the need for everything to be under Go root, which was a problem, and anything that had anything but Go in it. Anything that had anything but go in it. Any other questions there? Any other questions there? Well, we've <laughs> we've got ten minutes early then. Well, we've got ten minutes early.
Let's see what the cross are. What about that? If you're not overcome with go, yet yeah, it's weirdness. Um, one of the things that I actually, before I came to go myself, mm -hmm. I read a list of ten things every newbie gets wrong and tries to force, and I received soon myself. <laughs> it works um, out. Yeah. The big one is Go does not have an object system the way you normally think of an ob object-oriented language. It has things that look like objects. You should think of them as it's just a C structure with some sugar around the language to make it look like classes. You can get that machine was 20 years and you're not going to have a C. So don't try to do inheritance. It's not going to work. You can do things that will fake it. And they will be massive in the ass. I'm quite sure I do. I think so. And then eventually, after beating your head against that wall, mm -hmm. it finally dawns, oh. Yeah. And then you start writing the uh, language that it's supposed to be. So what what, what do you find about you know, that messes with your mind? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think the most likely thing is a lot of what goes design is, is C plus 40 or 60 or however many years of lessons. It's like C, the people design C, then design Go. So a lot of stuff like uh, structure, point, or pointers to struct, mm -hmm. getting a feel inside, you have special syntax for that, and C, it just works in Go. Uh, automatic memory management. If, if you need to have manual memory management, that would be Rust. If you need to have memory management, which is most programmed, so Go already handles that, which really is the entire class of errors. So a lot of it is just C with the boards shaved off. And in many ways, Python was sort of an interpreted version of that. I don't know how important this is to how well it works and how easy I'm able to pick it up, but one thing they did with the design of Go is there is one true style for formatting, mm -hmm. and it's enforced with the Go format tool. So it's kind of like Python in that sense of you never have to worry about it. Yeah, because it's not as much time as it is that, but... I don't actually know why I specifically was able to like that to get to get going in it so quickly. Yeah, so whatever works with me, but it was just curiosity. But um, and so if I have I have C, I have C plus plus, and then oh god, Pascal, and all <laughs> Java was the worst. I hated that one. <laughs> I need to look into Rust because I don't know it, but I haven't looked into it. Yeah, I said that was safe. And I said about Rust, and I looked at the format, and I'm like, it is. And I know that it's memory management. I mean, I know the basic ideas of what it's been imagined what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I know that it can get absurdly complicated as well. So it's something that I need to wait to look at it until I can spend some serious time mm -hmm. digging into it. So. Mm -hmm. Also, I've heard stuff about that basically their standard library had not solidified and they're only just now getting I think it'll just now get to that point. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, quite, quite, quite caught, caught, caught in the metaphor, it's rest to cargo, cargo to, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, crazy, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs>